Welcome to Respiratory HQ. I'm Tanya Peel, and today I want to talk to you a little bit about something that causes a lot of frustration and confusion when learning patient ass assessment, and that is percussion and palpation. So I'm going to try to do this, that it's going to simplify it, make it as easy as possible for you to understand, but I need you to go and watch my video on my website respiratoryhq.com called the three steps to success or you can find that same video on my YouTube channel because on that it will explain this obstructive and restrictive chart because you really need to understand the anatomical alterations of obstructive disease processes and restrictive disease processes and once you do this will be super easy okay so here we go let's talk about percussion first okay so percussion is the art of tapping on the chest wall to hear sounds here are the three sounds that we're going to hear we're going to hear something that is normal we call that normal resonance we can hear something that is high per resonant and something that is high po resonant when we just when we tap so I'm gonna give a simple analogy this is gonna be kind of silly but it makes a good point so when you go buy coffee in the grocery store you can get those great big huge plastic jugs of Folgers coffee all right I want you to visualize the lungs as being one of those jugs of coffee one for the left and one for the right all right now take the right lung dump all that coffee out all that's in there is air and when you thump the side of that plastic jug it's going to be really hollow and ringing that is hyper resonancy and hyper resonancy is heard over areas of air okay so let's go to this chart because of the anatomic alterations all of the obstructive diseases have air trapping present so when we percuss over the chest of somebody that has any of these five disorders we're going to hear a hyper resonant percussion note so all of these have an hyper whoops let me get this going right hyper resonance okay and then I said everything when you percuss anything over air you have hyper resonancy so when we come over to these restrictive processes even though these will compromise the alveoli a pneumothorax is air in the pl uh, plural space so when we percuss over that area where that air is it will also show a hyper resonance okay so now let's go back to the coffee can analogy now take that one of those coffee cans and fill it completely full of mud okay and tap the side of it thump the side of that jug and it's going to be really flat it's going to be really dull that's called hypo resonancy okay so when we look at this chart atelectasis is an area of um, basically localized areas where all the alveoli are collapsed and that makes more solid medium so when we tap over that it's going to be high po resonance ARDS is a thickening of the AC membrane when it's thicker there's more dense tissue it will be hypo resonant pneumonia and pulmonary edema there's cellular debris and fluid in the alveoli which makes that tissue more dense hypo resonancy and then a pleural effusion is fluid on in, in that pleural space that fluid is heavier it is more dense so it will be hypo resonant so when we look at this chart everything here with the exception of a pneumothorax is hypo resonance okay so that gets percussion taken care of let's talk now about so now let's move to palpation palpation is the art of touching the chest to feel for expansion and fremitus okay let's deal with expansion first all of these disorders on the obstructive side have trapped gas the chest is already full of air because they're trapping it inside so when we have these people take a deep breath 
they really can't feel very much. You're not going to feel much movement because they're already hyper expanded. So obstructive diseases will have a decrease expansion. All right. All of these restrictive disorders, when you look at atelectasis through pulmonary edema, and if you think about pleural effusion in the pneumothorax also, the alveoli are not functioning. They're not able to take on air easily. So every one of these that's present will have a decrease expansion also. Okay. Now let's talk about frematis. Sometimes there's a confusion between um, vocal frematis and tactile frematis. So me talking right now and my vocal cords causing those vibrations, that's vocal frematis. When you put your hands on a patient's chest wall and you feel that frematis, that is then tactile frematis, okay? So we just shorten it and we call it frematis. We're feeling for vibrations. So here's the thing to remember. When you're putting your hands on the chest wall, air cannot, excessive air cannot transmit sound. They cannot transmit the sound waves, the vibrations. So all of these are air filled. We're going to have a decreased frematis because of all the trapped gas. Now, when we look over here, Pleural effusion in a pneumothorax. That's either air or fluid in the pleural space. And if you think about that, that extra air and extra fluid um, expands that pleural space. So by the time you put your hand on the patient's chest wall, your hand is way far away from that lung tissue because the separation is that extra air and that extra fluid. So you cannot feel vibrations when there's a problem in the pleural space. So a pleural effusion in a pneumothorax will show a decreased frematis also. Okay. However, atelectasis, ARDS, pneumonia, and pulmonary edema, these are more solid mediums, denser tissue, and things that are dense and more solid transmit vibrations really pretty easily. So when we put our hands on the patient's chest and we have them say 99, with these disorders, the, the more dense the tissue is, the more solid the tissue is, the more vibrations we'll have. So these have an increase frematis. All right. So hopefully this kind of helps separate those two things, percussion and palpation. See you soon.